I want to know what you thought about Supercell. Was it? That's my superpower. I didn't mean to put that on camera, but there, that's what it is. <laughs> Listen, y'all, it's really very simple math, okay? Give me black people, give me superpowers, and I'm all in. <laughs> it doesn't take rocket science. That's, that's a good formula for me. If you clicked on this, I'm assuming that you either have seen, want to see, or want to further discuss the latest series release from Netflix, which is Supercell. Uh, Supercell was created by Rapman. Rapman is the stage name of the British rapper Andrew Omobolu. And I don't know much of his music, I'll be honest, but I did see his previous film. I think it came out in like 2019, Blue Story, which starred Michael Ward, who many of you may know from Top Boy. And this is his follow-up to that, or his answer to a uh, pretty successful uh, film. When I learned that he was making another film and it was also going to be um, sci-fi and it was going to be superheroes and it was going to be black people, again, winning formula for me. I was extremely excited about this feature. Yeah, I ain't going to waste too much time. We're going to get right into it. I am writing solo today. My co-host Thierry is not here. And so um, I'm going to try and give you the rundown in like 10 minutes or so. Let's see what happens. But go ahead and check out the trailer for Supercell. And we will be right back with the discussion. You can save her. How? You need all four. One dies, she dies. Find them before it's too late. Now, how can you not be excited after watching that? Honestly, honestly, you have to, you got to really be like a hater to not like black people with superpowers. It's just, I mean, come on. <laughs> but this is a black British series. So just a second. If you hear that sound on this platform, then know that we are talking about a black British series, a black British actor, a uh, performer and of the director, you name it. Every time it comes up, we're going to play that tune to uh, spotlight our brothers and sisters across the pond. So we have about six main cast members here. And so let's run down the cast real quick and we'll get into it. So the series stars... Uh, Tosin Cole as Michael, uh, Josh Tedeku as Taser or Teo, uh, Calvin Demba as Rodney, Nadine Mills as Sabrina, Eric Kofi Abrefa, who we all know and love at this point, uh, as Andre or Dre, and also Adileo as Dion. So the series starts out pretty straightforward we don't really waste too much time getting into the hook of the thing they start out we see um a black woman who's like uh middle age so maybe f late 40s uh, early 50s who uh appears to be in some sort of lab or prison right and she's trying to escape okay she ends up at a dead end we see her eyes glow that glow that we get from the uh poster of the show and uh, she blows down a wall, right? Well, <laughs> like I said, they was going full steam ahead with this. So after that, she ends up getting killed and we see her being dragged down a hall. Now, I would, I would like to say this. When, I, when we start out a series in this fashion, when we start out something with such like intensity or such intrigue, I always know based on how many episodes there are of a series that the pace is going to slow up drastically at some point. So we pretty much get that opening scene to pull us in and it does keep you, it does hold you for a while. But after that, the rest of the fun comes much later in the series. Let's be honest. <laughs> 
So I, f- I pretty much figured out the how and why as far as the superpowers go early on. I don't know about y'all. But once we got to the point where uh, Michael is, you know, working all those hours, he's going to see his mom, his mom, and <laughs> and we learn that she uh, has sickle cell. You start to see the common theme pretty early on. And then also um, the camera work that was happening with uh, characters like Rodney, um, even though he seemed like he was just a passerby on the street, he kept popping up. So you kind of learn who the key players are going to be pretty early on uh, if you're paying attention. So there's no real mystery there. Um, And then I was pretty much quickly able to tie in the sickle cell, the... uh, Black people who are disappearing along with the lab, quick tie-in for me. It took no effort, wasn't, um, you know, hard to figure out. (laughs) But that's not a bad thing per se. Um, So once we meet Michael, we see what he's into. Uh, He's trying to, you know, work hard. uh, And he's, you know, trying to impress his girlfriend with a BMW, which, by the way, I don't know what shipping company he's working for that he can afford such a nice car for his girlfriend. He gifted uh, his girlfriend, Dion, a a blue Beamer. And, um, yeah, he said he was just working extra hours, but he must not ever go home. That was my thought there. I I just didn't know where he was getting all that money from. (laughs) But, you know, that's just me. He was also working long hours and trying to do his thing so that he could support uh, his mother and get her the treatment that she needed. We also get introduced to uh, who I would consider the second main character as well, um, and that is Taser. Taser is a gang leader, if you will. He's running the streets of London. And what I appreciated a, re- a lot about this series was that it gave us like the most um, authentic london street gang south london street gang uh if you will because here in the u.s we we forget not me i'm speaking in general not not me but people forget that guns aren't readily accessible to you know the common person like here in the u.s right we have more guns than we have people in the u.s let's be honest so when you see these gangs Um, And they are on the streets, you know, bothering each other, having their rivalries and so on. And everybody pulls out their knife. You kind of get thrown a bit. And I I saw um, some commentary online where people were like, it took three episodes for someone to pull out a gun. It didn't make sense. And I was like, y'all, it's London. (laughs) It's not. (laughs) People, Listen, people think everything is, you know. Is L.A. It's it's just not the same. It's just not the same, y'all. So we also go down the journey with Dre, Andre. I'm getting used to seeing this actor, Eric Kofi Abrefa. Um, He's everywhere right now. Um, If you don't know, he was uh, in BMF, for one. He also was in the um, feature film, uh, The Book of Clarence. He's diversifying his resume even more so here by playing a father role, right? So something totally different from what you see him doing on BMF. And, you know, I'm enjoying his work overall. So uh, we get into his story a bit. We see that he has, you know, baby mama drama, but also that he is trying to better himself. And all of his moves are for the sake of his son. We also get introduced to uh, Sabrina. And Sabrina happens to be a working nurse. Um, she's a professional girl. She's trying to date. She's a young woman. Um, and she's just gradually getting more and more fed up with, you know, how her guy is treating her. I mention all of that because in this series, Supercell, everyone has a trigger. Spoiler alert. What we learn here as far as Supercell, Supercell represents a gene, a trait that's found in black people who, um, either have sickle cell uh, in their family or in their uh, genealogy or have parents who were directly um, affected with sickle cell, right? And it's a dormant gene that, you know, resonates and it's brought out or triggered by what seems to be traumatic events. So 
Michaels is triggered when he uh, goes out to deliver a package, runs into Taser in the gang, and um, he's attacked. And when he gets attacked, he gets stabbed. We see that he gets like all these superpowers, which, by the way, I, I'm not going to go too far into the superpowers. But I will say this. None of the superpowers that we see are unique. Uh, nothing abnormal or different than what we are used to seeing with, you know, cinematic universes, you know, superpowers, comic books. It's it's all the same. So we get, you know, uh, time travel. We get super speed. Uh, we get super strength. We get telekinesis, um, teleportation, invisibility, all of those fan favorites, all the things that we have grown to love. And when people say, hey, what would you want your superpower to be? It's one of these. It's one of these ones that we see in the show. <laughs> so nothing uh, unique or different with the superpowers that everyone gets. But the story is rather unique. Here's what I was a bit confused about was the fact that every one of our main characters, when they are discovering that they have these special abilities, everyone has someone to confide in and tell about their ability. So Dre has his, you know, his homeboy. And then uh, Michael has his, um, his girlfriend who he's telling. Uh, Rodney has his best friend that he uh, lives with and works with on the streets. Sabrina has her her best friend, her her girl who gets her into a lot of trouble. But also, yo, she's so needy. <laughs> <laughs> Wonderful actress, but uh, gosh, that character is so needy. Like, I always got to be there for you. You always get me into trouble. Listen, if you have friends like that, don't go places with them, okay? Because... <laughs> You'll end up in an alley, you know, wondering if you killed a man, for example. But I say all that to say this. That was that was unique to me because I'm not used to, like, all of them, all five of them have someone to confide in. I was expecting at least, because the stories were very parallel, I was expecting at least someone to kind of, like, not be so welcoming of their superpowers to kind of have some kind of variety in there. But everyone around them, you know, believed what they had to say for the most part. Um, didn't freak out too much when they were shown uh, each other's superpowers. It was not a big deal. Um, so there was that. But, um, you know... I let it slide because I was having such a good time. <laughs> I'll be honest. The middle of the show gets kind of slow, which I again expected. So that seems to happen a lot with the um with Netflix series. They're trying to fill in that time. And I often sit back and I watch this stuff and I say, could this have just been, you know, a two hour movie? Because there's so many down points where it's like, okay, uh-huh. Uh, you're just going through the motions right but it's fine you once we get to the other side it is well worth it that other side is revealed when we get everyone trying to come together so michael ends up visiting the future well into the future because everyone's hair was grown out and so on um which indicated that by the time we got to the end of the season that this has to do well for there to be a second season. <laughs> and currently the show is sitting at number two on Netflix. So second season. Yeah, <laughs> I, I'm here for it. I'll tell you that straight away. Um, but Michael sees into the future, realizes that, you know, he's going to have to try and save his girlfriend because he visit, visits her grave. And in order to save her, his future self tells him that he has to gather up the the others so he has to gather up rodney sabrina andre and um taser he has to gather all those the crew up in sort of a um avengers assemble ordeal right and uh <laughs> it even though it takes a while to get there once we get there the time is had um some of the downsides i just did not like i said i didn't understand why everyone was so accepting of the powers 
and had someone to confide in. The people around them didn't freak out. Nobody went and told anyone else, nothing like that. Fine. Um, the other thing was the they quickly learned how to use their powers well. Um, and they learned along the way that, you know, some of them kind of get drained more than others. They have to allow themselves to rest a bit to recharge their powers, for example. Um, but there was no period where we learned how the powers work or you, 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 you get my point. It was just pretty much, oh, I got powers. Oh, I'm freaking out. Oh, I'm going to try this out. And then they just end up getting to a climactic point where they are fighting uh, people who are hunting them down. Another spoiler alert, the white people are testing black people with sickle cell because they are aware of this uh, super cell gene, this super cell um, trait that is in these black people. And so they want to um, find them, gather them up and do tests on them. A tale as old as time. We've seen it. We're used to it. Um, this works, though, because black people, um, we already kind of have a unique relationship with like doctors and science if you don't know research and um this works for this show it's grounded in it's rooted in something that is real and relatable uh, most black people know someone who has sickle cell um or has to battle with that disease and so there's that kind of thing that's relatable and, and not um supernatural but then you add some um supernatural themes behind that and it becomes an entire adventure. So we get the fight at the end. Um, the things that I liked the most uh, with Taser's invisibility, there's a scene where he slits a guy's throat. <laughs> it was perfect. It was perfect. Um, Sabrina, she's a bit unhinged, very uh, Jean Grey, if you will, where she just does a lot and gets tired. Um Rodney Rodney is is interesting. He's not my favorite character, I will say. Um and Michael Michael is set up as our lead character in this series. But I would have to say my favorite character to watch would be Andre. I just love watching him with his son and having those bonds. And um, that may just be me, you know, one day I want a son. So that's there's that. So <laughs> really no nothing deep to that. But I'm just, I'm enthralled with this universe that has been uh, created by Rap Man. And I look forward to more. And for all of us Black people, um, just globally, who often say we want more representation, we want to see more unique stories, uh, we want to see ourselves in different lights. This is an answer to one of those. You can throw Supercell in that pot of those um, types of films. And I would say, after watching this, I enjoyed it for the most part. I really didn't really have any issues or problems um, with the series too much. But there are some things that are just so stereotypical to uh, the superhero universe's that it already exists, that there are some predictability there. Not seeing uh, very many uh, shootouts and things like this in a show that, you know, has like gang violence and, you know, so on can be a bit off-putting for some audiences. But I think on a wider scale, people who are already into superhero flicks and action adventures and, you know, the, just these kinds of sci-fi thrillers and dramas... You're going to love Supercell. I am going to have to rate Supercell a Queen Latifah respectfully. All the pieces are there. It, it's, it's seated in the genre that it wants to be in. It's creating and building a world that sets you up for wanting more. And all the performances are on point. Um, there are very little downsides other than, like I said, typical superhero tropes. Everything else aside from that is an upside. It's visually appealing. The uh, storylines are there. Everything is cohesive. And the down points in the middle of the series are worth the hassle. Okay? 
That's all I'm gonna say. I'm just, I'm just gonna say. I'm just rambling. I'm just rambling. I just really want to get all of this off and get this, uh, you know, off my chest and share it with you. But more importantly, I want to know what you thought about Supercell. Was it? That's my superpower. I didn't mean to put that on camera, but there, that's what it is. <laughs> Did you enjoy Supercell? Did you uh, like the series? Um, what are some things maybe you disliked or that you wanted to see? And now that it's ended the way that it has, are you excited for a season two? I think they should go ahead and announce it. Don't even waste time. You know, sometimes they announce stuff. They right out the end say, "Oh, we just we're doing a season." Go ahead and announce it. We we want it. We do want to see more. Thank you in advance, Netflix. And um, yeah. What would you rate <laughs> this series? I just I just really want to get in the comments and have conversations with everyone. Um, if you notice any like Easter eggs or some of the characters that you didn't like, maybe that's something I didn't mention that you wanted to go in about. Let me know, and I'll be in the comments chatting back and forth with you. I just I I'm in it. I'm committed to this, and I'm going to support in whatever way I can. And this is just a small part of that. So if you've been watching this long, go ahead and hit the subscribe button, the like button, and leave a comment letting me know where you're watching from and what you think about Supercell. And you can find myself on uh, all the social medias um, at t -Ron World on Instagram, at t -Ron with two underscores on TikTok. And you can find Ubiquitous Blacks all over the social medias as well, at Ubiquitous Blacks. If you have any recommendations, uh, you want to just share some love, you know, maybe you want to be a guest on the pod, you name it, email us, ubiquitousblacks at gmail.com, and we will get back to you. Uh, what else? Am I missing anything else? No, uh, after you watch this, if you finish Supercell, go back and watch it again, or just go turn it on in the room and let it run through the episodes. So that way, Netflix knows that we definitely want a second season. You know, Netflix don't play about canceling anything, whether we like it or not. So run those numbers up, y'all. Don't just watch it once if you enjoyed it. Go ahead and watch it again. Check out some of the episodes again. Support this in any way we can so we can actually get the results of this uh, story. And to all the performers in the, uh, the series, phenomenal job. I enjoyed everyone, and I am going to spend my... Uh, rest of my week researching <laughs> films and other things that everyone is in because yeah i i'm committed i am happy i am pleased and i want more that's that's all i gotta say so uh yeah <laughs> i've had a good time chat with me in the comments and i will see you next tuesday